You know, everyone has physical parents. Well, I would have to say that Donna Cox is my spiritual parent. She is the reason why I have given my heart to Jesus Christ, and she's a very important part of my salvation story and my story as a woman, as a mother. And so we just want to take the opportunity to introduce you to the amazing Donna Cox and Bartise Cox because they have shaped and molded our lives in more ways than one. And so we want to introduce you all to this amazing couple so that you can benefit from the gift of who they are through their love story. And their story is going to be coming up next on the Rich Relationship Podcast with Gil and Renee. Welcome to the Rich Relationship Podcast with Gil and Renee, where amazing things happen. Our goal is to help build, repair, and restore healthy relationships. Our primary focus is on the marriage relationship. However, the topics are applicable to the relationships that we value most. Remember, we're stronger together. Let's grow. Well, Mr. Bartice and Donna, we thank you guys so much for hanging out with us on this episode of the Rich Relationship Podcast with Gil and Renee. We just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you for having us. We are excited to finally get to do this. (laughs) You know, it's funny. Renee said all those great things about you, but, you know, it was later that I actually got to meet Bart. And I can say I actually instantly had felt a pretty connection to to him. And I thought if if Donna was so cool and awesome, she had to have a partner that was just as cool as awesome and and this is going on and some many, many years. So yes. we we just thank you because Bart is just as awesome. Yes. Mm, that's something. I was listening to that introduction and I was going, oh, are they talking about us? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Absolutely. You know, that goes both ways. You know, yeah. we, uh, you know, being overseas and everything, we, we just strengthen each other. And, uh, it, you know, it's just a, it's a great opportunity. To, we were just blessed to meet people that we could uh, share with and uh, and grow with. So, you know, we really appreciate it. Man, and it has been so many years. It's funny because we met when we were originally stationed in Germany together. Yeah, and before we had kids. Yeah, B- BC, B- or oh, I should say BA before Aaron. And you guys <laughs> have multiple children, but that was a, a time that was great, you know, and, and when you get overseas, you already feel kind of isolated your family and and all the people that you care about. But when you get that connection with some people, that is just an awesome, awesome thing to have. That's right. You know, I, I, Bartiz, he was just saying, I guess about a week ago, how when you're overseas, you don't have anyone else. So you, you don't have your family. So if you really connect with the people that you meet there, the people that you're compatible with and the people become family, your extended family. And a lot of those relationships continue even after we leave overseas. So I I can, I honestly say that the people that I met overseas, especially the two of you, I've, I'm closer than even some of my childhood friends that I, people that I grew up with. So it is true. Right. And you guys are like, the masters of long relationships. You guys have been together. And so please just share with them how you guys met and, you know, how long you guys have been married and just the beauty of your longevity. You want me to go first? Yeah, you start. Okay. (laughs) We love to see who goes first. It's always like that. Well, you know, I, uh, I met Donna in high school. Uh, is, um, when I saw her, I mean, it was just an amazing thing. I, I saw her way before she knew I saw her and I just kind of tracked her, you know, just like, wow, who is that? that? (laughs) At a different school. And I think, you know, later on we met uh, at a track meet, I really got enough nerve to come up and talk to her. And I think within the first conversation or first couple of days, I told her, I said, you know, I'm going to marry you. I just said it just out of the blue, just like that. And here we are. She's in 11th grade, I think. And I was in the 12th and, you know, she just kind of looked at me like, yeah, whatever, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we started dating and, you know, we just, we just hit it off. I mean, we were, uh, from really two different backgrounds. I lived, uh, on the, on the opposite side of the track, so to speak. I was in a kind of, I guess people would say the projects more or less. It's a bad side of town. And I, I, rem- I recall the mother didn't like her coming over there at all. She was like, she, actually, she was, uh, 
quarantine from going over there. <laughs> that's an appropriate word, right? <laughs> so and that's that's no joke. You know, it, it was it was a great relationship. I guess off a, a track, you know, I uh, she brought some things into my life that I never would have been you know, open to, you know, uh, she was doing music. I knew she was, I knew she was a singer. And, uh, later on, she went to college at Eastman and, uh, I had to go to a lot of operas. So uh, <laughs> I actually got, uh, learned some of them and not to sing them, but just <laughs> develop an appetite for some pretty nice operas. And I wouldn't dare try to say some of the words or the, the name of them because uh-huh. I always mess up the names. Uh-huh. But I can surely tell you when someone can't sing. <laughs> yeah, Donna has that effect on all of us. She's taught us that everyone is not a beautiful instrument. And, and it just, you know, we, uh, she's, we, what, we've been together 36 years now. Wow. Uh, since 1977? Yeah, we started dating in 1977. So that's like a lifetime, 1977. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> later, that is a long time ago. I know, and uh, it's just it's just been wonderful. I, one funny little story, though, I got to tell you. Uh, when I was maybe pre-K, very young, I, we used to live in this uh, area, and it was a tree called the Chainerberry Tree. That's all the thing I know about it. But it had a will on it, and I might have been may have been five or six years old, and uh, I used to go. It had a will on it with a rope, you know, back in the old days. I know you guys y'all had swing sets, but back <laughs> in the day they had. Like a tractor tire and a <laughs> and a rope on it. Those are the best kind of swings. So I used to. There was like three other little little people that I used to play with, and one was a little girl, and there was another little boy. And I used to go out and play with this little girl and push her on this tire uh, in the evening. Sometimes when my mom let me go and let us go out and play. Come to find out, it was Donna. No. Wow. Get out of town. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it's so crazy. You know, we sit and talk about it sometimes, and I go, "You got to be joking! That are you serious?" And it's like, yeah. You know, we listened to a lot of episodes, and we done interviewed quite a few people this past year, and I did not see that one coming. That was like a movie twist. Yes, that's so beautiful. So, Donna, Donna, I heard you in the background going, hmm, a couple of times. How accurate oh. was Bart's story? With your, with your version. You know, there's always his version and your version. That's right. <laughs> okay. Well, um, he's right about us meeting um, very young and um, pretty much growing up together. Uh, even though we, we had, you know, there were times when we were apart because I went to New York. He was in other countries. You know, we we just kind of figured out how to make things work from a distance. Right. And we and that was I think that was really key to the reason why we stayed together, because we showed one another that we believed in what we had. Mm -hmm. Um, Bartiz made a statement about how different our, our families were. Even though we lived in different place on like on he lived on the other side of the track. Our family lives, when we got older, you know, when we started talking about family, we learned that our families weren't that different. Mm. So we had a lot of the same drama going on in our, <laughs> in our families, but it was just two different sides of town. So, you know, you just really can't judge a, a neighborhood and say that one's life is better than the other until you get behind closed doors and really see. So once we learned more about one another, we decided that we wanted to do it different. We wanted to make things better. We wanted to be there for one another. We wanted to have children together. We wanted to be there for our children and provide for our children. Um, Just the basic things that people might have, we didn't have that growing up all the time, you know. So things like that, you know, those are little things that he left out. And I think that one reason why our relationship is so, it stayed so strong is because we went overseas. We, yeah. we grew up in our marriage together as a new couple away from family. We had to depend on each other. It was not a situation where, okay, well, I'm going to my mother's house or I'm going to this place. No, we had to figure some things out on our own. And that really, it, it bonded us together in a special way. People would see us and say, Y'all are a different kind of couple. And, <laughs> and I would think, I think it's because I really thought it was because 
we never had time around a fam- the familiar. We had to become one another's familiar. We had to really get to know each other and and really, you know, be patient with each other. And love was not an infatuation anymore. Love was also a commitment. Yeah. And then we started having children and, and then, okay, that's a whole nother level having right. the children. Right. Yes. Yeah. You know, so we, we, we enjoyed that process. I think we enjoyed, did we enjoy? Yes. I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Donna, you just said something that kind of resonated with me that you grew up together in your relationship. Can you speak to some of the things that you guys kind of had to really work through for those couples who may be just starting out and and going through some developmental stages in their relationship, some of the keys that you think you guys, if you can remember something, just a couple of things off the top of your head, you too, Bart, that you guys had decided that between you two that you were going to practice in your relationship. I, I'll say one thing that mm. we said that we would practice early in our relationship is having just a one-on-one relationship and not allowing other people to be in our relationship, yes. meaning other people having other you know, little outside relationships. Fidelity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. In a relationship and it's just he and I. Right. That's something we decided when we were really young that we wanted to be in our relationship. So we did we did really well. Um and um but I think that, you know, everybody goes through things, but we have a commitment to one another that was greater. So that's that's one of the things I think. Yeah. And what would you say, Bart? What was something that if you could recall something that that you kind of adopted in your relationship? Well, you know, uh, being away from family uh, initially, I, I think that kind of stands out with me with uh, Donna. And uh, because I think she's she was seems to be a little closer to her family. And when we when we uh, went to England uh, in Germany, because we left England and went right to Germany, we didn't. We didn't come home. We just stayed over there for like eight years or so between the two. And, you know, there was there was times, you know, when when you're alone, you don't you don't have anything else. It's not like like she said earlier, like I can't go home. I know there's times where even if we wanted to get away from each other, you know, where are we going to go? You know, I, we didn't even know you guys initially. We couldn't even run over to your house. Right. So, you know, I, I can remember times we would you know, have disagreements or things wouldn't work out, you know, it wasn't working out and we just get so upset, but, you know, we, we couldn't go. It's nothing we could do about it, you know? So it, it forced us to, to make, say, Hey, look, you know, we, we can't, we can't do that. We can't do this anymore. We can't, it made us closer actually. And I think that, uh, that that's when that commitment thing really kind of kicked in. I mean, we had to make some decisions and it's like, Hey, you know, it's, you know, it's like you might, my ride or die partner type thing. You know, that's, I think that's a real thing. There's, it, there's a time in your life, uh, you know, and, and things aren't perfect. Things go wrong and things happen. But at the end of the day, you know what you had to do. You got to, you made the commitment to do something, you know, and it just, and it's beautiful when you just happen to love the person you made that commitment. And, and that's what I think sustains uh, a relationship through, through anything is that you make that commitment. You, you have to make a decision, a conscious decision. Uh, Cause some days, you know, you're not going to love it. That, I mean, that's different. When I say you're not going to love every day, that's, that's, there's a, some things with that, you know, because what I mean, you're not going to, it's not, every day is not going to be perfect. Right. So right. you got to make that, got to make that conscious decision. So Donna, when, when you were going through, you guys said y'all traveled a lot and when you were going through some separation because of the military commitment, how would you say that kind of challenged your relationship or did it ever take on a new paradigm for you? Cause you guys got sound like you got married pretty early you know, and to be in another country and being alone when your husband is gone, did you guys have already have the kids? No, actually, Bartice and I, when we were dating, that's when we were apart and part of our engagement. Oh, okay. Yes. Now, okay, there is for about a, what, a year and a half, Bartice and I split up because he went to Okinawa. Okay. And uh, we had... Oh my gosh, how many years we've been at that time, we've been together about four or five years and he went to Okinawa and I decided that I did not want to have a long, um, that type of long distance relationship because I just didn't know. I I didn't feel good about it. Right. I just didn't feel good about it. So I said, Hey, 
no, we're going to go ahead and move forward. And, you know, and then my mom said to me, if the torch is still burning, y'all will get back together. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that was that was perfect, perfect terminology for what it was like after that year and a half. I just graduated from my master's. Bartiz called me. I could not believe he called me. I on the inside, it felt like my heart just burst, you know, it with joy. And I started sweating. I had a little anxiety attacks because I was so excited about the call. And then he said, well, I would like to see you. He came over and it was like we didn't miss a beat. Wow. So my mom said, oh, God, I guess the torch is still burning. I said, it's on fire. It's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's one of those episodes in our life that we knew that we had something special and we wanted it to really last. Wow. So, Bartiz, how did you propose to Donna? What was that like? Tell us that part of the story. Oh, I, I could tell her the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's what the listeners would love to hear. Because if it was anything like the swing set, I think it's going to take a real interesting turn, it sounds like. <laughs> really this is good. a real interesting this turn. This is really good. <laughs> okay. Well, we're just going to let you guys talk then. Go ahead. <laughs> I kid you not. Me and Donna, she came. And let me just tell you, Donna used to get in a lot of trouble coming to see me. I got to tell you this other little story first. I can't tell her that. Okay. Well, her mother was looking for her one day. <laughs> she was supposed to be in school in New York. You grown well, girl. Okay. Where you were from the other side of the tracks, right? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I, I was in North Carolina. So her mother was like worried, sick. Where's my daughter? Where's my daughter? So she sent the sheriff to our house at my apartment <laughs> in North Carolina oh, wow. to see if her daughter was there. It, that was funny. I just wanted to this get This was that. post cell phone, y'all. No text, no Instagram, no Twitter. This we was... worked your mother so much. Wow. But at the end of the day, she, she loves me. Her mother loves me. Because uh-huh. you're lovable, Bart. You are lovable. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, you know, what's so amazing, you know, and I have known you all for over, over I mean, almost yes, 30 almost 30 years. years. And Gil asked me, did I know your story? I said, you know, actually, no, I, I don't. You know, and it's amazing how you can know someone and a part that a part of what makes their marriage what it is, you don't know. And so that's why this is so beautiful, because your children are going to hear this and y'all going to both get some cool points, because like I give y'all some kudos. Y'all are like, like um, Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> So, Bart, as you were, you dared her to marry you. Was that premeditated or is it just something you had to have been thinking about? This is somebody I'm going to spend the rest of my life. Well, he already said that when he saw her. Well, but then you were, you were what? A a juvenile? How old were you when you said that y'all were still in grade school? No, they were in high school. In high school. In high school. The first time he said it. Okay. The first time he said it. So you've been thinking about it ever since then. Oh, I, I just, I had already, I decided in high school. I just didn't know when it was going to happen. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I what I think happened. Okay. Well, tell, you us tell, your, us, tell us you your, tell your school, school Donna. Tell us your <laughs> Wait a minute. Bartice was so in love with me Uh-oh. that he looked at me <laughs> and said, I dare you. I dare you to marry me. And he didn't say that at first. He said, let's get married. And I said, I just looked at him and I said, oh, oh, well, you know, he said, I dare you to marry me. <laughs> Oh, don't dare me. Cause it was almost like, it was like a dare. Do you love me or do you not love me? That's right. the way I took it. Right. So I'm like, I can show him that I love him this much to marry him. <laughs> if, if you can remember back then, what were some of the things that was running through your mind? And I was thinking, well, what if he goes overseas and I'm here? What, if, what, what are we going to do? How will this work? And then I thought, well, if he goes overseas, I'll just go with him. Yeah. Because we really wanted to be married. We just thought that it was not. I don't know. I, I don't know why we jumped up and got married sometimes. I mean, I think we were just proving to one another how much we loved each other. Yeah. Um, and that's what we did to show each other. And, you know, I think we're more concerned about what our family. That's what I was just thinking. Yeah. You know, I think we were ready for it, but I don't think they were ready. We didn't mm. feel they were ready. for right. it. And then it got to the point because uh, I can remember having a conversation with my grandmother about, about Donna about this. You know, I'm the only child, so uh, she brought a point up about my my, my mother here just recently, and I actually I think it's a little true because she was saying, well, you know, you you, you know, you're the only child, your mother's the only child, so of course your mother and grandmother 
it's going to be hard to, to give you away. It's like giving you away to another woman or something, you know? And I, and I could see my, me and my, I've never had a disagreement with my grandmother. My grandmother really raised uh, until uh, about Donna. And that was the first time I, I stood up to my grandmother and said, hey, you know, uh, I, I like this girl. If you, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do about it, you know, however you feel, I'm sorry, but this, I, I really love this girl. She finally came around and accepted it, and we just moved on. But that was, I can know, I mean, that was, uh, it, my grandmother was a, a pretty much everything to me. And I, for me, having the courage and having, there had to be something in me about Donna to make me say something to my grandmother to make her realize that, hey, you know, uh, this is, this is going to be my wife in the future. And, you know, I love that part because I think in so many, you know, we work with so many couples and one of the biggest issues is women feeling prioritized. And by you making that decision and me and Gil went through the same thing because he was really close to his mom. And I remember him telling his mom, you know, mom, you are one B. Renee is one A. And so I think that the husband, for those men who are listening, it's your role as a husband to step up and make your wife feel like she's the priority. And the same in wives. It's our job to make sure our families know that they're the priority. So when you think about this generation, you know, what would be some of the things you think are obstacles to this generation prioritizing their spouses and knowing how to prioritize them? prioritize their spouses? What would be something you think would be an obstacle to them doing that? For this generation? Yes. That's that's a very uh, that's not a difficult question, but there's a lot of I have a lot of concern for this generation, just basing it on the children that I currently have now. Uh, none of them are are married. Um, they're in their thirties, from twenty high twenties to mid thirties, uh, and they their their attitude is uh, the the uh, institution of marriage is, is really not that important. Mm-hmm. And then that's my perception, you yeah. know, and then that's with my kids. I, I don't want to generalize that. Sure, sure. So, Donna, Donna, what would you say to that? Because you, you're around youngsters, uh, people of, of that millennial generation. Is that would you agree with that or could provide some talk to some more of that about some of the state of how marriage is seen by younger people? If you do have those kind of conversations with some of your students, the young adults that I've worked with. They are so goal oriented. Mm. They there is a there's a certain period for a singer, for example, to be very very um, specific. For a singer, between the ages of 22 to 28, if you have not had certain opportunities, saying in certain opera houses or oratorios or whatever, whatever the the path, the genre path that you decide then if you haven't done certain things, then you probably won't have the career that you desire. So I think that one thing that might get in the way of a person prioritizing another person would be their career goals. Hmm. I also think that a lot of people are not, and this is for me, and this is another perception because I look at my own children's relationship. I don't see what, it's hard From what I can, I'm uh, I'm just interpreting what they say. It's hard for them to find someone that is on their level, um, understands, has certain a certain belief system. Um, They're mature enough, or mature enough really to have a relationship with someone, a monogamous relationship. I think another thing that uh, I know this might not be something anybody would want to hear, but I know that having sexual relationships before marriage has always been something that's always happened. Right. But I believe that the freedom that both men and women feel that they have now and the choices that they want to make and make any choice they want to make, they make it for the now. And they don't think about that decision a few years down the line. And when you deal, deal, deal yourself out, in sexual relationships with so many people, it can affect the way you perceive or can have a relationship with someone because it is without it. You cannot say that intimacy is sex when a person can go from person to person to person and say, oh, it's no big deal. And then one day they realize, well, I, I don't have any intimacy in my relationship. It's because relationship has not been built 
to have intimacy. Right. Intimacy is not built from being in the bed together. That's part of it, but that is not the key. Right. Yeah. Yeah. May I? Oh, yeah. Add, go ahead, uh, May I add just one thing? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Of course you can. I think, uh, you know, I spend a little time with my daughter. She thinks I don't, but I listen to her a lot. But uh, I've watched her and, and talked with her through some relationships. And, and it seems that I have to remind her of her value. Yes. And if it was anything that I would want to share with any young person about uh, relationships is, 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 you know, they must value themselves. I, I think the time now, will, you know, if you just can hear the message and what Donna is saying, and, and I think what I'm saying it. Our perception is that the Institute of Marriage is, is uh, not as strong as it used to be. And I really, and we need it. There's still young adults out there that would be perfect for them, but they just have to find each other. Right. And that's, and, and, and teaching someone to wait, and be patient and value themselves mm-hmm. is a, is a, a difficult uh, thing to do right now with, you know, gadgets or everything's about speed. 4G, 5G, 6G, we're going to be 10G in a minute, mm-hmm. but right. everything is like instant, you know, and, and it's just difficult for, uh, there, like I said before, there are kids out there, young folks out there that we just, they just need to find it, whether it's in church, uh, in, in a place of learning, uh, because that you have to be mature enough to make sound, solid decisions. And I just, I try to teach my daughter about just valuing herself, be patient. Maybe you two will meet meet at some point in your life. And and I love that you, what you said earlier, Bart, you mentioned quarantine and, you know, you kind of said it jokingly, but when you're overseas or you're in the military, we have lived that quarantine lifestyle long before Corona. And so when you learn to be okay with being by yourself, you kind of get to know yourself. So a part of the process of these young people learning to value themselves, it, they don't necessarily have to go away overseas like we did. We got married and we moved away from everybody. But a, a part of it is being okay with waiting on us, really knowing who we are and what we want so that we don't settle and so that we can value marriage. And like for us, all of us have been married for you know over 30 years. years and so they look at it as if oh it's just easy but it's work i'm listening to you and we listen to so many couples it's it's a choice you mm-hmm. know love is a choice it may not be perfect everything may not go the way we plan but you guys have made a commitment to each other and i love that and i respect and value that and so that's something that you don't realize how much even just doing this podcast it's going to reach so many people that we may not necessarily touch And so I appreciate you guys being transparent and being vulnerable because that's what people need. They don't need reality TV. They need someone to be real with them that they can talk to. And like even the book we're doing, you know, you guys is part in that and just making sure that this generation, because you, like you said, that everything is fast. This is a healthy way for them to get advice. And while our kids may not listen to us, they might listen to a podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what would be something you want to share with your children? You know, you guys have two boys and a girl. So what would be something you would share with a young man and something you would share with a young woman, Bart and Donna, both of you guys, please? Well, one thing I always, since he started with Jordan, I'll start with Jordan. Um, um, I think I believe it is extremely important to have standards and when it, especially when it comes to relationships. Don't settle for something just because you feel like you don't, you're running out of time or you feel desperate, make sure. And that, and that is something that now I've noticed that she has certain standards and if, and she can say no and she can walk away. I'm really proud of her for that, for that. Yeah. And she understands another thing that I've always preached to her. And I believe any mother should say to any of their children, whatever a person shows you, whatever, whatever a person does, whatever a person says, however a person acts, it's not an accident. That's who they are. Yes. <laughs> so you can't say, well, oh, um, he or, or this woman, she did this, you know, and it, it was a mistake. They didn't mean to do it. If they're, if they're showing you who they are before you get married. Yes. 
Well, don't think that when you say I do, that is going to change because I do does not change who that person is. Say that again, girl. That's the big, that's the big, big, big thing I have to say to my children when it comes to relationships, getting into relationships with people. And if you choose, if there's something about a person that you know that's hard to deal with and you marry that person, you've married that too. Yes. So... I, that's my big thing. So what would you follow up to that, Bart, when you talk to your sons about relationships and going into it, what are some of the things that you would share with them kind of relating to similar to what Donna would say about as they go into the relationship, what should they be looking for or expecting from your own experience? If you could give yourself that same advice, what would you want them to know? That's a good question. I try to teach my kids, all of them, actually, but some of them is a little more difficult than others uh, about uh, humility and uh, being resourceful in a relationship. I think sometimes, you know, those are the things that I see that you that are going to be required in a relationship at some point. I mean, a lot of times you meet when you're young, no one has anything, you know, love can't pay the bills type of thing. You have to build, build a relationship and it takes a lot of tools to build a relationship. While you're building that humility, humility and uh, being humble, I should say, about where you are at this point in time and then uh, being resourceful and build and building that relationship. Whether, for example, I, I like to I like working with my hands and uh, I have an uncanny ability of, of taking like a dollar and making it look like 15. I think women and I hope I'm not being no, I've been. Female chauvinist, if I say, it's okay. I think women have a certain expectation of, of, you know, men taking care of things like lifting heavy things or make sure the lights stay on and those types of things. There's there's certain expectations that were set out early on in the fifties and sixties that certain things that men did, certain things that women did. Those things are kind of changing a little bit, mm. but you still have to. Uh, I think the guys are expected to be a little resourceful and, and be humble where you are at this time, but you, you got to keep moving. You know, you can't, you can't stay where you are all your life. If you want to uh, develop your relationship, right. develop all of your life, you know, you want to, uh, that, that helps you uh, be mobile, yeah. upward, upward bound. And I, and I, I want my kids to do that. I think BJ's demonstrated that pretty well. Oh. You know, uh, Jordan has two. Uh, Corey is working on it. Hopefully, I talked to him about managing and finance. But geez, that's a tough conversation. Sure. But, uh, I, you know, because that's part of it as well. You, you, you guys have always been such a great example of love and family and being successful financially, but still always bringing other people along the way. What would you say has been the motivation for that? What has been because you guys have been so instrumental in our lives as parents, as Christians, and as a couple. What has been the factor in your life that's made you say, I want to take other people along with me? Personally, I just, I never thought anybody would follow me. Um, I never thought of like bringing people along. I just wanted to always accept people for who they are and always make sure that they feel like when they're around me, that they're loved, mm -hmm. that they're appreciated that they are very important in this whole puzzle of our lives that we're together for a reason. And we, we just want to, I just wanted to be there. I want to be dependable. I want to be, um, supportive. yeah, supportive. So that, that's not, I don't, I didn't set out to be that person. I just wanted it just to make, happened, huh? yeah, it, <laughs> it did. And, and it always as, as astonishes me. Um, and you know, one of the, True blessings of my life um, is when I hear those babies say Mimi. It just <laughs> really I said, you know, for Renee to have them call me Mimi, and I know what that means. Mm -hmm. I know the other grandmother that they may not have, you know, right. and, and it really, really touches my heart to know that someone would um, really means a lot to me. So. Well, we know you love children and you, I mean, you've, you've been in our lives and been so instrumental in parenting, you know, and that's the thing. I think so many times couples don't realize 
You need people in your life that can be a part of your decision board and that you look mm-hmm. up to and that you listen to. Not just that they're talking, but that you listen to them. Because it does. We all need each other. That's how we grow and that's how our lives are changed. And, mm-hmm. and, and we yeah. need that. We need that. So we appreciate you guys actually being on the show. And be, before we start wrapping up, I just wanted to ask one last question is you, you mentioned about the, the, the foundation or even just the way marriage is perceived. The value is not there anymore. It seems like in our society and in people's perspective about it. And I want you guys to both kind of answer this question. If just out there talking to someone who was engaged and getting ready to take that journey, what would be that one piece of advice that you would advise them as they go into this new thing called marriage about what to expect? Well, I think uh, compromising is, is uh, I think, a big word. And, and compromising doesn't mean giving up yourself. You know, it, it means uh, being understanding, uh, being uh, an empathetic listener and communicate through problems. Uh, making sure you understand what your partner is saying to you. Uh, you can't, you, you have to have that communication channel open. Uh, so, so you can work through things if, if, and, and I have a problem with that myself because I shut down sometimes, but the thing that I would want to share what, you know, newlyweds, mm-hmm. you know, spending the rest of your life together. Uh, and anger is not, is something that has to be you know, managed. I mean, people get upset, but you can't, you can't blow up. Absolutely. Empathetically and, 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 you know, compromise. Um, I would say to them, it's, I mean, it's two individuals and, um, it's not, it's not the wedding. It is a, a marriage is a process. It's a journey together. You have two individuals that are coming together and they want to live the rest of their lives together. It's not, an easy process, but it is a worthwhile process. And it is a relationship that co- becoming one is, is, is one of the, it's, it's so hard because you're both individuals and you know, you'll never ever see everything the way the other person sees it. So you have to understand that it is a walk and it, it is a slow walk. So just make sure that you're down for the journey. Yeah. Well, you know, Donna, I want you to shift gears to Dr. Cox. I know you have an upcoming event. So could you please tell them all about, because Donna is a professional. She sings opera and a, a myriad of genres of music. So you have an event coming up. Please share with them how they can hear it and how they can connect with you. And you do voice and just all the things you're doing to help people to improve their instrument. Okay. Well, the upcoming a bit. Uh, event is tomorrow evening. It's Juneteenth and a Juneteenth performance. And note, I have never performed on a Juneteenth performance ever. Wow. Um, so I, I am so excited. My son, his job has, um, my oldest boy, he decided he wanted to do a series, a music series. Wow. So they, they're supporting him and we are all the two of the first event is tomorrow and it will be an hour long. I have a link on my Facebook and I can. Okay. And I will be singing and making the songs, you know, songs that everyone knows and just to inspire us in our present state in the United States. And it'll, it'll just be wonderful. He'll yeah. sing first and then I'll sing and, and then we'll close out. So it'll oh. be really, and he's accompanying me on a couple of the pieces. Oh, that's going to be really beautiful. Bart, you should be proud of them. You've been so instrumental in giving them the yeah. freedom to do what they're gifted to do. And so we just love and appreciate you all. We thank God for your marriage and for your friendship and, and just thank God for your, for your lives together. Well, thank you both for blossoming. Um, into the beautiful couple. Oftentimes, I make reference to Renee and Gil. If someone is having a rough time in their marriage, I'll say, I know a couple that are doing it right. And I'm so proud of them and how they their maturation period as a couple has really been phenomenal. So I'm very proud of who the two of you have, been, have become. I really am. We love you. We wouldn't do, be able to do it without you guys. 
Well, Aww. Mr. Bart and Ms. Donna, we really, really appreciate you guys investing your time and sharing your lives with the Rich Relationship Podcast community. Thank you again for being on the show with us. And we really, really appreciate you. Thank you. I really appreciate being, having an opportunity to share <laughs> and uh, some time with you guys. Thanks again. Thank you. And remember, we are stronger together. Let's grow. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your investment in time. Remember to subscribe to the show and hit the notification icon to be notified when new episodes are posted on the podcast platform that you're listening from. Or you can always find us on our website at richrelationshipsus.com or our YouTube channel, Rich Relationships with Gil and If you found this podcast helpful or you think it can help someone that you know and care about, Please pass it along and share it with them. And also, you can always send your questions and comments to richrelationships.us at gmail.com. This is a weekly podcast, and the new episodes are going to be posted on Monday by 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Remember, we're stronger together. Let's grow.